Hey guys, I apologize in advance for any dog noises you may hear. The one dog gets fed in like half an hour and he's been throwing a fit for the last hour in anticipation because he's really bad at telling time. And the other one is sleeping behind me so she'll occasionally snore when she readjusts her position. <laughs> so I apologize in advance. Um, anyway, it is currently 8.37 in the morning on June 10th and today we're going to be formatting Letters from a Madman. Um, the normal font paperback, not the large font or the ebook. I will get to those later. I will get to those in later videos. This one specifically is in preparation for the proofread edit. Um, I'm going to do my best to keep all of the clips from this in one video, but I'm going to separate it into two separate sections within the video so that way I can refer back to it in future beginning to end series. So section one will cover the part of formatting that I always use in my books, which, um, can be saved and reused for future books so I don't have to redo it every single time and since it will be in one of these videos in a hopefully clear cut and concise way I will just be able to refer people back to this video when I do other beginning to end series with like um the Carver Baxter series eventually the Bo Austin series so on and so forth and then I'll be able to just reuse it and that will make things easier for me <laughs> um this section that I'll be doing for the first part of this video will be things like the um, also available from section, the title page, the dedication, and the blank pages in between, as well as the QR code thing that I do at the end of my books that links to book merch. You don't have to do one of those, I just currently do, though I don't have anything set up from Letters from Madman, so that is something I need to work on at some point. Um, but outside of that, section two of this video will cover everything else. Um, changing your chapter headers to images, doing page numbers, um, your name and the book title in the headers next to the page numbers, um, scene break transition items. I personally use asterisks when I'm writing, but I change them to images when I do the paperback formatting. Um, the text messages in this book will probably look different than they normally do in my books, and the letter formatting for the letters from a madman will probably also look different, but that will all be in section two. Section one will be the stuff that we can reuse. So, with that said, let's flip this around and move on to section one of the video and get that out of the way. Alrighty, so I do have Cut to the Kill open here in case I need it for reference, but otherwise I'm going to come up here to the top of Word and open a new document. And then I'm just going to go ahead and open up a blank document. And down here, <laughs> got our create button. All right, so step one, we're going to go ahead and change the paper size. Uh, for me, because of the paper size or the book size that I use through Amazon, that is five by eight inches, which is index card size. Okay. And then we're going to go into margins. And again, this is the one that I have found works best for me. It is the one that causes the least amount of issues for me when it comes to Amazon uh, KDP. I didn't have as many problems when it was create space, but with Amazon, it's very touchy with the margins. If it's even 0 0.01 a different direction, it, doesn't, it does not work for me. Uh, might work for you, but I stick with this without readjusting because it's easier that way. <laughs> Um, up here in the top margin, I go for 0.25 inches and same with the bottom margin. And then on the left and the right, I go with 0.28 and then, oops. And then for the gutter, I go with 0.5. It could probably be smaller than that, but again, I don't mess with it because it's Amazon and it's already difficult. <laughs> uh, gutter position is left, not top. And then multiple pages, mirror margins, whole document, okay. All right, so now over here, you can see that this is now the starting point of this page because this is your gutter, which allows for the book to be bound and for the spine, it accounts for the spine and, and all of that. But now we are going to come over here and on line spacing, I personally do 1.15. 1 
And for font, I personally use Garamond and 12 point font works fine. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to save this as its own document, just titled something to the effect of uh, paperback book layout, and then I'll be back. All right, so there is no set standard really on how to format your book. This is just the one I've always used. This is the one I prefer. So I'm going to leave a blank page here and then open up another page. And this one is going to be my also available from page. Um, for this, normally I come up here, add space after paragraph, and then do four enters, two, three, four. And then on the fifth one, we're going to come up here and center it. And then in capitals, I'll move you over a smidge. Write out are also available from, and then your name, and then another space. And I'm going to write out the books that I published last year in order. And then I'm going to change this from 12 point font to 10 point font. And I think that's okay. And then from there, we are going to go again. This is my title page. I'm just going to go ahead and type title page for now. And then do another enter down here. That is my next blank page. And then we're going to do another one and write out dedication. And then I'm going to come down and I've already copied it from Cut to the Kill. So I'm going to place my copyright thing here. And this I'm going to mark as red because that's Cut to the Kill's ISBN and that will remind me to change it. And I'm going to put 2020 here. Leaves less of a chance for me to accidentally forget about that. Once this is done and the dedication is done, this will also be moved down so it's evened out more, but for now it can stay there. Um, we're going to press enter again, open up a new page. This is going to be another blank page. And at this point we should have an even number of pages. We do, I have six. So the next thing you want to do, this is important, is come up to page layout at least on my version of Word, go to breaks, and then you want to insert a section on the next odd numbered page. I lied, <laughs> hold on. Word always screws with me on this. Um, like that, it changed this page over here to number seven, which is not what you wanna do. So I'm gonna press enter first, and now that it's down here on this odd numbered page, now I'm going to press start it on the next page or the next odd number. And when I click up here, you can see this one is section one, this one is section one, this one is section two. This will allow you to add page numbers without it being up here, but we'll talk about those page numbers in the next uh, section of this video. So here, out of the header, I'm just going to write chapter one and change that back to black text. Um, and that, it's just so that way I remember what it's for. <laughs> so now I am going to do another section break. And this one, I'm just going to do the next page. And then this should be section three. Yep. And again, that will allow you to take the page numbers off of this, which will be when your book is done. Um, for now, I'm going to write QR code, but there's no guarantee that that will be the QR code page, depending on how the book breaks. If it's an odd number or an even number, this could be a blank page and then the page afterwards would be a QR code. But either way, we would have to see. <laughs> but that is all for the savable layout part. Um, again, the title page depends entirely on the book and the dedication depends on the book, but the copyright thing will pretty much always remain the same, save for the fact that the dates will change uh, and the ISBN will change, but everything else is pretty much set in stone. So 
I'm going to save it one last time and then we're going to move on to copying the actual book over for section two of this video. So I'm going to start pretty simple. I'm going to highlight this entire document and press copy. And in the simplest way possible, I'm going to come down here to where chapter one begins. Kindly erase this part. <laughs> and then paste it. All right, so everything is pasted in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything, change it to Garamond, and then change it to 12 point font and 1.15 space. And then I'm going to need to come back up here and change this to seven point font and this to 10 point font. And now that that's done, I'm going to save this as a separate document under Letters from Madman instead of the current title up here of paperback book layout. From here, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all of these are on their own page as in a separate page and not a continuous page. So I want each one to be an actual page break. And after I do that and feed my dog, I will be back with the next step. So I've gone through and made sure that each chapter header is on its own page, chapter title, whatever you want to call it, is on its own page. And now there's one more thing I'm going to do. You can see down here, there's this huge gap between what the pages are doing. And I don't know if this is on every version of Word or just mine, which I think is like 2007, but I'm going to highlight the whole thing, right click it, come into paragraph, go over to line and page breaks and then widow slash orphan control, I'm going to double click it so that way it's an empty box and press okay. And that fixes the issue. I don't know why it does that. I don't know why that version is the one that's like the uh, standard, but I did figure that out with one of my previous books after dealing with the issue for so long, but that fixes it. So my next step after saving again, is for this one in specific to figure out what I'm going to do for the chapter headers. So far, all of my books have been different. With Cut to the Kill, I had this part of the date on one line and then the day of the week on another line and they were all together clumped up in one thing. Um, with Ashes in the Light, there was no like chapter one, chapter two, it was just the date and those were all done with a little ghost in the background. And with Man of Darkness, it incorporated the uh, color light in the sky behind each or near, I suppose, each chapter header along with the dates. So I need to figure out what I want to do for this one. And I have a feeling that's something that I'll probably have to show you after I wake up, because even if I manage to figure it out here in the next little bit, it's going to take a while to do it for uh, 35 chapters. So. I will get back to you guys when I figure out what the heck to do for a chapter header. It is 8.23 in the morning on day two of the paperback formatting of Letters from a Madman. And to start with, we're going to go with the chapter headers. So I have designed these as of this morning. <laughs> I was thinking about them all of yesterday and we're finally here. So for chapter one, because it's in Hilo's point of view, I have Granger here on the detective's badge. And then for chapter two, it's Taki's point of view. So Harris is written here. And for the madman's uh, point of view, which starts at chapter four, there's a letter in the background. I will show you those, but they take forever to load. So I will do that once they're actually saved to my computer. Here's what Taki's chapter header looks like. And here's what the madman's chapter header looks like. The only difference is once it's in Word, this will be in a black and white color. So the letter here will also be gray and these will stand out against it. Um, but that's because the book prints in black and white and I always switch it to that in Word. I would do it here on Designer, but you cannot do that <laughs> as of this current moment. You can on Canva, but for me, Designer is important because I also use the free version of Canva. And on the free version, you cannot 
uh, export images as a transparent image. And in my experience, trans uh, exporting them in a transparent image gives you the best look once it's exported in PDF. Uh, whenever I do it without, there's weird gray lines on the side, so I just do it uh, transparent no matter what, and I currently can only do that on Designer. So that's important if you're using Designer and doing chapter headers that way. When you go to the download on the PNG, there's a transparent background button, and you want to make sure that you hit that. But I'm going to go through and do this for all 35 chapters, and then I'll go back over to Word and show you how to put those in there. It is now 9.42 a.m. and I'm getting ready to go to bed in like literally three minutes is when I start getting ready. <laughs> so I'm only going to do a few things here before um, I get changed and lay down in hopes of falling asleep soon. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do chapter one here just so that way you can see what's going on. So I'm going to backspace these and then backspace this again. So that way there's no extra space here. So like if I went up, it would take me to the page above it, which is what I want. I want this to be the first line of the page. And then up here, I'm going to go to insert picture. And then I'm going to find the one for chapter one, which is here. And then when that loads in, things look pretty okay but I'm going to come up here and text wrapping. Sometimes I change my mind based on what it looks like. Um, like this is what tight looks like. Um, and sometimes it doesn't look like that. It seems to depend on its mood. Um, so today I'm going to do text wrapping top and bottom. And I'm going to do that for all of them. I'm going to leave this at the size that it is. I'm going to leave it at the top of the page, I think. Um, I'm going to see what it looks like in the middle and then we'll decide from there. All right, I actually like the way that looks. I'm going to put the chapter headers, oops, <laughs> at, in the middle of the page here and then go from there. Uh, I didn't show that, but all I did was on the uh, image tab that pops up when you click on it over here in position, I just put it here in the middle of the page and then pressed enter on this first paragraph until it ended up directly below it. Again, there's no line in between this picture and the paragraph. If I go up one, it puts the next space above this image, which is what I want. So I'm going to go find a spot where there's a scene break for the asterisk. Uh, and I'm going to show you one of those and then I'm going to get ready for bed and then I'll do the rest of this when I wake up, as long as I wake up on time, and then we'll come back after that. But I will be right back with an asterisk for you. <laughs> All right, so for the scene break, I'm going to backspace these asterisks. I have already saved this image, so hopefully things will go right, but I'm going to paste it in here. All right, and normally it does that, it moves it up and that's fine. I'm just going to move it down here make it a little bit smaller, generally 0.3 or 0.25. All right, so I changed it to the text wrapping in front of text, and that's just so that way I can move it. I did my best to center it in between these lines. I changed the height to 0.35, and then I'm going to align it with the center here. And then on text wrapping, I'm going to, after I copy it, that's important, I'm going to put it behind text. And that will put it so that way it's not blatantly in my way. Um, I do want to move it up just a smidge because of where it lays on Hilo's name. And I actually might just make it smaller. So we're going to go 0 0.34. Formatting your book is all about adjustment. All right. So now I changed it to 0.34 and I like the way that looks better. So I'm going to click it, copy it a couple times, <laughs> and then put the text wrapping back to behind text. And I'll have to check these again um, when I'm editing to make sure that the chapter header didn't push it 
out of the way. But for now, it is good where it is. So I'm going to scroll back up here to the top, come back to my first chapter here, and I'm going to save and go to bed. And then when I wake up, I will continue doing this and I will check back in with you guys for the last steps after I'm done with all the chapter headers and all of the asterisks. All right, popping in super quick here to say that I've made another change with the um, scene break thing here. I changed the height to 0.32 and then here after this paragraph, I added a space after it to put a little more room here without it being excessive and I think that looks a lot better. So I'm going to go back to doing chapter headers <laughs> and we'll go from there. So there are a ton of ways to mess with formatting in your book. This here is still Garamond, but this is the first letter that they receive from the madman. And I've put a blank enter here before the letter begins and another one down here where it ends. And I changed it to 11 point font in the Franklin Gothic book. So that way it's a different text. I was going to do a brush cursive that I like, but there are a lot of people who can't read cursive, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that just for uh, readability. So I'm going to go through and find all of the letters and do this, and then I'll be back tomorrow because it's already 11.33 p.m. and I'm normally out of here half an hour ago. Hey guys, it is 7.59 in the morning on June 12th, which I believe is day three of paperback formatting and we're going to get into the final touches today. So these are my text messages, and for this book in particular, I'm just going to leave them this way. Um, this is their back and forth here. I had planned on initially doing it in text bubbles and, you know, putting helos on this side and talkies on this side for this particular chapter, um, and then doing that the appropriate way back and forth between their point of views, but I don't want to right now. I might save that for something in the future, but I still need to figure out the best way to do that um, and what I want the text bubbles to look like because in my world it's not an iPhone or an Android device or anything like that, um, which is talked the most about in the Bo Austin series, but you know, <laughs> still the point stands. Um, so I'm going to leave those as they are. So today we're going to work on the headers. Um, which is where we'll put the page numbers. So if you remember that super helpful bit where we made sure that these sections were separate, that's going to help us a lot in the page number situation. So in my version of Word, it, it's over here in the design tab when you click on the headers and footers. And it's that link to previous button up there. And we're going to unclick it because you don't want it to be linked to the previous same sense i'm gonna go clear down here on section five i don't know why there's a section five um oh i know why now i started a couple new pages a couple times because i refused to stay where it should have so those count as other sections that's okay so up here i'm going to add the page number and go top of the page Oh, one more thing. Different odd and even pages. That's also important. So now, top of page on the odd number side, you want it, for me anyway, on this side of the page. And for the even side, which here and show you. And again, um, I don't know if you noticed that, but the link to previous thing popped up. So I'm going to click off of that again. And then over here, I'm going to put it on this side. So uh, now on the odd side, I need to come over to the page number button and press format page numbers and then down here instead of from um, instead of continue from previous section press start at and then change it to one and then press ok and then that will change these to one and two which is what you want so another thing is that I'm going to highlight these 
and change it to Garamond again because that's what my book is primarily primarily formatted in. If you weren't using that, you could change it to something else. And I'm going to put it at 10 point font. I think that's what Cut to the Kill is in. Um, and same for the even side. Change it back to Garamond. Change it to 10 point font. And then on this one here on the odd page, I'm going to put the title of the book in capitals. And that's casually going to throw it back into Times New Roman. <laughs> so again, Garamond, 10 point font. And on this side, I normally do two spaces, I think, because otherwise it looks weird. And then put your name in all caps. Because this is two spaces, but if it's one space, it just looks way too close for me. So I always do two. And then click off of it and you'll be able to see it there. And then when you come through, things should look normal. I'm going to go down here to the end. You can see here that section three has, um, oops, sorry. I forgot that it will randomly scroll back up again. That section five has uh, linked itself to the previous again. So I'm going to click off of that and then erase that. And you'll most likely have to redo it at the top as well. Nope, that's surprising. Okay, so the main part of this is done. The only thing that you really have to do at this point is the dedication, which I always do at the end, generally. <laughs> the ISBN, which I won't change until we start putting stuff into KDP. And the title page, which I won't do until I have the cover design. And then the other thing for me is the QR code thing, which I can't do until I have merch up on the store. So I'm going to wait on that as well. So I'm going to go through this um, and check things out for edit stuff. But otherwise, that's the formatting process that I use for my books. Um, it's a long one. <laughs> it takes a little bit, but it's well worth it. And it's a great skill to be able to format your own stuff, both for paperback and ebook. I will also do another video like this when I do the ebook formatting, and I'll do another video like this when I do the large font formatting. For the large for font formatting, full disclosure, I will be using this format already for it, so I won't be starting from the beginning, so the video will be shorter too. Um, but the, the primary thing will remain the same. I'll be walking you through the steps that I use to get to the end uh, product. But otherwise, that's all that I have for this one. I think I showed you everything. Chapter headers, page numbers, margins, all of that stuff. Um, and hopefully it was helpful to you. The next video in this series will be edit eight of Letters from Madman, which I'll be getting tomorrow on Saturday. Um, but I will see you guys then. <laughs> Otherwise, that's all that I have for this one. If you enjoyed it, a like is always appreciated. If you'd like to stay updated on any of my stuff, feel free to subscribe. Links as always to all of my social media and authors' websites are in the description down below. But otherwise, that's all that I have. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.